Welcome to section 8.6, factor ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, the, actually the easiest way to factor this is going to end up using something called factoring by grouping, which won't show up until next section in 8.7. So I want to give you a, just a quick rundown on how that works before we go into how to factor this form as easy as possible. So when you're factoring by grouping, uh, this is a strategy that you take any time when what you're trying to factor has four terms. Because if it has four terms, what we end up actually doing is we just want to group it into two groups of two. So we'll group it into the first two terms plus then the second two terms. Now, out of those first two terms, let's just in that first set of parentheses, let's see what's the biggest thing we can factor out. Well, within that, uh, we can pull out uh, no whole numbers, but we can pull out an x squared. And what's left then on the inside of the parentheses would be an x minus two, uh, because we took two out of our three for a power, so we're down to a one. Uh, we didn't touch the two, but we could factor out that whole x squared, so all of that disappears. We're left with just that x minus two. Then we will add uh, from that 5x minus 10, we can divide a 5 out from both sides, which again would leave us with an x minus 2. Now here's the tricky part with factoring by grouping, is you have to remember to recognize that when you have an x minus 2 on both sides within those parentheses, we can factor that whole chunk out together. And so what that will then give us is an x minus 2 times What's left over? Well, our leftover stuff is an x squared plus five. And that would be your final answer. We have factored this by grouping uh, and we came out with something that just looks a little bit weirder, but that's why we ended up with four terms when we multiplied it out. So that's all the more there is to factoring by grouping. So now when we have to factor something, uh, and what's actually different with this is we're now going to have a number a in front of our x squared. Uh, and this a is not going to be one, it's going to be some other number that's not one. And that's where the hiccup gets thrown in is because this makes it a lot more complicated than what we ran into last chapter. So let's just look at this first problem uh, and I'll walk you through the steps on how to solve this. So when we're going to factor uh, 2x squared minus 7x plus 3, our first step is to recognize, oh crap, there's a two in front of our x squared. Well, what this means is you're gonna to have to multiply that two by this three, which is going to give us an answer of six. Now, just like what we did last time, we're gonna look for what can multiply to six uh, that will add to this negative seven. Well, we could have a six and a one or a three and a two. Uh, since I multiply to make a positive, but add to make a negative, that means they're both going to have to be negatives. So six plus ne or sorry, negative six plus negative one, that will give us a negative seven. Hey, that's actually what we were looking for. So that's going to be the pair of numbers that we want. Or if you want, uh, you could go and just check with your negative three plus negative two would give you a negative five, and that is not negative seven. So we know that doesn't work. Uh, so for sure, negative six and negative one will be uh, that part. However, that's not your answer this time. That is not your answer. Let me repeat one more time. That is not your answer. What we have to do with that negative six and negative one is we're actually going to unsimplify this negative seven X. So we're going to split up that negative seven X into a negative six X plus a negative one X. Now we will still have this plus three at the end and we will still have this two X squared at the beginning but we use this as an intermediate step to get it to something where we can now factor it by grouping where it will work every single time, uh, assuming it can be factored. So uh, we've now got four terms. So we split it up into two groups of two. Now from that two X squared and this negative six X, we can factor a two out of that, which will leave us with an X squared minus, oops, uh, X squared minus three X. Uh, but silly me, I forgot I could actually pull an X out with it. So if we pull out a two X, that will then just leave us with an X minus three. Uh, for the next one, 
Well, if you remember from factoring by grouping, we wanted what's in the parentheses at the end to match. So even though that one and the three can't really be factored out, I'm actually gonna factor out a negative one so that what's left in the parentheses is exactly the same. Because now that will change that to be a positive X and we'll change that plus three to be a minus three. And now if you remember from factoring by grouping, we have that X minus three on both sides. So we can have an X minus three. And then what's left on the other side is a two X plus negative one. And if you'd rather have it be a two X minus one, you can go ahead and make that a two X minus one instead of a plus negative. Both would be just fine. But that's how you end up factoring this when you have a number out in front of our X squared that isn't a one. Let's try another one like this. So first, uh, our first step was take that front number three times the back number, which is negative five to get a negative 15. Now things that multiply to negative 15 that add to a positive 14, well, we could have a, oops, let's not even worry about positives and negatives yet. Uh, let's just go, we could have a one to 15 uh, and we could have a three into five. Now they add to make a positive, but multiply to make a negative. So that means the positive one has to be the larger of the two, the negative one has to be the smaller number. Well, negative one plus 15 gets us that positive 14. So that is exactly what we're looking for. You don't even need to do the next one unless you really want to. So remember that that's not your answer. That just is telling us how we split up that 14n. So that 14n is actually the same as a negative one n plus 15n. Now we still have that minus five at the end and the three n squared at the beginning. And so at this point, we have four terms. Anytime you have four terms, split it up into two groups of two. Uh, on that first part, uh, the three and the negative one don't have anything that can be factored out, but we can pull an n out from both sides to leave us with a three n minus one. And then on the right side, uh, we could pull a three out. Uh, and that would leave us with a five, oh, sorry, we can't pull a three out, we can pull a five out. That's what happens, because uh, five can't be divided by three, but five can be divided by five. So 15 divided by five would leave us with a three N, five divided by five would leave us with a one. So all that's one thing to pay attention to. Anytime that you are fact dividing out the whole term, it will still end up leaving a one behind because it's the same as dividing that term by what you're dividing out. Uh, so remember that a five divided by five would leave us with that one. Uh, now the final step, we have the same thing on both sides. So we divide out that three n minus one. And what's left then is an n plus five because we have that n plus five. Now let's go ahead and try this next one. Uh, well, again, first step, negative four times seven will give us a negative 28. Uh, we can then Look for what numbers multiply to make negative 28 that add to make a positive 12. Well, if they multiply to a negative but add to a positive, uh, that, again, that means one positive, one negative. Uh, so we could have a one to 28, uh, two into 14, uh, not three, uh, four into seven. Five, six. Okay, and that's gotta be it. Um, so uh, they have to add to a positive. So that means the positive one is the larger of the two numbers. Uh, and now let's just see what happens. So 28 plus negative one will give us a 27. That is not it. Uh, 14 plus negative two will be a positive 12. Hey, that is it, which means it can't be that last one. So uh, now we can go and look at our 12 and split that up to a negative two X plus 14 X. Still have that plus seven at the end and that negative four X squared at the beginning. Uh, at this point, we can break it up into two groups of two and factor from there. So in that first term, I'm going to notice that I can pull out a negative 2x, which will leave us, me with a 2x minus, uh, oh, sorry, plus, because we pull out a negative 2x will be a plus 1. And on that second term, uh, we can pull out a 7, which will leave us with a 2x plus 1. Now I have that same two X plus one on both sides. So that means what's left then is that negative two X plus seven. And that will be your final answer. 
So let's finish this off with a word problem that's sort of related. So we have a rectangle's length. So let me just go and draw a rectangle quick. Uh, so the length uh, is 13 meters more than three times its width. Wait, hold on. Uh, so let's say its width is x. Uh, so three times the width plus 13 is going to be the length. Uh, so I guess 3x plus 13. Clearly this is not to scale, but oh well. Uh, the area is 10 square meters. What's the width? Well, that means our area, uh, which would be our width times our length, 3x plus 13, uh, has to equal 10. Well, we can now multiply this out. So x times 3x will give us a 3x squared. x times 13 will give us a 13x equals 10. But we can't, fact, we can't solve it and factor it like this. We have to get it equal to 0 first. So subtract that 10 from both sides. So we'll have a 3x squared plus 13x minus 10. Uh, now we've got it equal to 0. So remember our first step when we're trying to factor this, uh, because since it's equal to 0, we can factor and then solve for our zeros. So 3 times negative 10 will give us a negative 30. Things that multiply to negative 30 that add to a positive 13, we could have 1 and 30, we could have 2 and 15, 3 and 10, uh, uh, 5 and 6. And since they add to make a positive, that means the bigger number has to be the positive one, smaller number has to be the negative one. Negative 1 plus 30 is 29, not it. Negative 2 plus 15 would be a positive 13. Hey, that is it. So it can't be the last two. Uh, so that means our 13x will split into a negative 2x plus 15x minus 10. Uh, 3x squared out in front equals 0. Now we've got it into four terms. So we group it into two groups of two. Uh, on that first one, we can pull out an x, which will leave us with a 3x minus 2. On that second one, we can pull out a 5, which will leave us with a 3x minus 2 equals 0. Now we can pull out that 3x minus 2 on both sides. So we'll have a 3x minus 2. Uh, whoops, uh, 3x minus 2. Let's get rid of my chicken scratch. Times what's left is that x plus 5 equals 0. Now, remember, we set both parts equal to 0. So 3x minus 2 equals 0 or x plus 5 equals 0. We can add 2 to both sides. 3x equals 2. Divide both sides by 3. x equals 2 thirds. Uh, on the other side, we can subtract 5 from both sides, and we get an x equals negative 5. So that's all the more I've got for you for today. So good luck, and as always, let me know if you have any questions.